say it didn't show Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name And they're always glad to care Good evening everybody Welcome to the Hit and Run Candlesticks Tuesday night. Remember Zealand, appreciate you being here. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, J hooks because uh, I had somebody here ask me about those, and um, I thought, well, that'd be a good subject this evening. So thank you very much. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Netflix, big, big, big. Uh, move so uh, those Netflix folks. If, if somebody, if somebody had Netflix, uh, held it into the the um, uh, close today through earnings, you are being well rewarded. Uh, we might look at Netflix uh, maybe on a pullback. Uh, I just wanted to bring it up and look at it. You can see the uh, how we made a bottom. We rallied up, came down, made another bottom. There's still you know, anything could have happened in earnings. It could have been, uh, yeah, the recorder's on. Thanks, Gigi. Um, anything could have happened. Uh, chart could have looked good, and it did look good today, uh, it, right into the close. Uh, earnings could have been poor, and then if you would have held it, it would have been just very sour on you. So um, sometimes through earnings, it's hard to tell. But those that kept it, good job. Well done. Big bucks. Serious money there. Okay, uh, again, like I said, we're going to talk about um, J-hooks a little bit tonight. And, uh, again, thank you to the uh, person that asked me about it. And uh, I do appreciate it. Sometimes it's tough to come up with something to talk about. So I really do appreciate it. Okay, let's... Um, I'm going to find one here. Uh, let's not get too crazy. Um there you go. Uh, let's look at CMCM. We're gonna we'll we'll use that one kind of a show and tell to start with. Um, and it doesn't matter whether the chart is in a full blown uptrend or if it's in a downtrend. We're not gonna really worry too much about sideways moves. Uh, well, we'll we'll see some sideways moves tonight, uh, but. Let's just worry about the big trend right now. It's pretty clear that CMCM is in a downtrend uh, and not in an uptrend, but it's also clear we have a little J hook right here. So if we were to take this chart and let's just look at this and uh, the candlesticks, and if we were to get rid of the um, 50 day moving average you know you might not know the condition it's in you might not know that it's been in a downtrend all you see is this flat bottom and you see this rally and this pullback here um, and then you see the start of a J hook now really quick here uh, first of all when we refer to a J hook um, and it's down here what we're referring to is it's headed toward a J hook breakout it really is not a J hook till it breaks out here and um, when that happens you can now see the J you can now see that uh, J where we have that high it comes down and it starts rolling up and then we get the breakout and that is the J hook breakout anything down in this area it really is not a J hook. It, it's I refer to it as a J hook sometimes, being lazy. Uh, maybe refer to it as setting up for a J hook. Once again, being a little bit lazy. Uh, when you hear hear me refer to it as a PBO J hook, that's probably what I should call it all the time when it's still in this area because that's what it is. It's a pullback opportunity for a J hook breakout. Now, what we're going to do is end up looking at some charts, uh, but first, a couple things I want to talk about, uh, about a J-hook, and sometimes there's a big deal made about the name of a chart uh, pattern and, and uh, a big deal made about, well, I've got to see this right here, and then 
is this too deep uh, should it be shallower um, should it come down to the uh, let's see green should it come down to the 50-day moving average maybe if that's where the 50 is and come up should it come down to the 20 sometimes there's just there's just uh, way too big of a deal made about it and I think if we just kick back and relax and realize what is happening in a J hook uh, setup, J hook setup, or a PBO, or an actual breakout of a J hook. And to have a J hook, um, it, to, to have a J hook, you've got to have you've got to have the first move. Uh, so there's three. There's basically three parts to a J hook, and let's draw that a little bit real, real quick here. The three parts are: um, we have to have that rally up, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have some profit taking, and then what we're going to have is another rally up. Now this is just three straight lines, and we know that in these three three straight lines you're going to have little areas that are going to show some pullback or the opposite of that direction for here, for instance here we are moving up that's kind of opposite of what we're doing especially intraday very opposite of what the direction is you can see we're moving down here and for the most part that's opposite of moving down um, and then today we're seeing our reversal. So in this in this example, there's not there's not a whole lot of uh, of candles going against the trend uh, up or down uh, right in here. But th this is the basic. That's what you're looking for. And and in this area, you know, you're just you're 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 looking for that that rounded move up. And I'm I'm spending a lot of time here because repetition is is important and after a while you you um, uh, you see it enough times and then there's that uh, there's that aha moment when you figure out oh I see now so that's kinda why I just want to keep repeating that right in there and the, the big thing the big thing is is what is a J hook why don't we why don't we break it down to what it is and it is simply a stock or chart that's trending that has a little bit of profit taking pullback it's all that is is profit taking pullback and the reason it's profit taking pullback because if it was a full blown correction you probably wouldn't see a j hook out of it so you're looking for those little pullbacks that um if you're using fib lines you definitely want it above 50% uh, above 38 percent is probably my preference uh, but there's it doesn't have to be I don't you can see you know you see throughout the day that I don't typically use fib lines um, I'm just looking for a chart that moves up and moves back two steps up half a step back maybe three steps up two steps back maybe something like that but all we're looking for is for a trend a little bit of profit taking and then we're looking for that trend to continue and something like that now this pullback here you know in a, in a J hook it doesn't have to necessarily have a big pullback like this you know there's all kinds of things that could go on and happen in here uh, for instance uh, if here's the one thing you have to have you have to have the trend up you could end up with a pennant flag type formation you could end up with a uh, nice little rounded bottom that is that is shaped very much like a J right in here you wouldn't think well man that not necessarily shaped like a J but if you looked at the candlesticks I think what you'd be able to do is you'd be able to pick out some of those candles and you'd be able to draw that J in there just like that but you could also draw that flag or uh, pennant uh, formation in there formation the wedge in there remember all this is is a little bit of a profit-taking pullback and 
those that hunt for the J-hooks, PBO, J-hook formations, what you're hunting for is a pause in the trend and you're looking for it to move up higher. Now, that, that's another thing too, is I, I get a lot of questions. Uh, how do you how do you know you're in the right one? You know, we, we kind of had that conversation today a little bit and Doug came in and talked about it a little bit where as much as we want to be, have that perfect price and we always want to be in a winning trade, the fact is it just doesn't happen. I think the best thing we can do is look for charts with certain characteristics. Not every chart is going to have that characteristic. Uh, for instance, this chart right here, we have a piercing candle, big deal really. We don't have follow through yet other than that bottom is being supported. Now for that purpose right there, I think that is a big deal. I think it's a monster deal that we have a bullish piercing candle and we're being supported with those lows right in here. Let me draw a line that'll stay there. There you go. So you can see how we're supported here. Then we start moving up. And this right here, by the way, a lot of people miss this move. This is a very common uh, move to make because it starts popping up. And you get a little nervous about buying it. And you start looking at all the... Uh, uh, resistance over here to the left so what do you do with that well you you allow that move to work and you wait for that pullback this to me is one of the most important parts of the J hook uh, the PBO the pullback uh, one of the most absolute important parts because if you don't have this you're not going to have the follow through so what is a J hook pattern it's just simply a continuation pattern and a continuation pattern from what well right there it is it's from a bullish run the bullish run can be uh, like I said earlier it can be in a full-fledged bull trend where the 20s over the 30 the 30s over the 50 and, and so on and just it can be just like that and then you get these little pullbacks that rally up and continue up pulls backs like that little J hooks and they continue to rally up well this this one happens to be one coming off the bottom and we're gonna go through a list here and look at a few of them I haven't cherry picked I've just created uh, I just put I had some scans and I put two different watch lists two different scans and what we'll do is we'll <laughs> we'll pick out um, we'll pick out some charts that what I think look good uh, they may look better some may look better to other people and it it's all your preference and again it's I'm trying to make this somewhat light because it's not complicated it really is not all we're looking for is a trend to continue and this is what we're looking to get in in this area down here and if we were to uh, draw a a uh, circle in here like that what we're trying to do is get into it not not on this move here but uh, say at the bottom of that circle up maybe you know maybe in that that bottom bit of the circle now there, there's certainly not a problem with entering that that chart as we move up it's just the closer you get to um, the closer you get to this high right here then what happens is you start adding another uh, another issue in the pro in the in the situation for instance if you were to buy it down here uh, on a bull candle like this one is then you have the potential of that profit up to this area in case it does not break through because the fact is we are coming up to some resistance and this is a very common area for um, J, -hook, J hook potential charts to fail so 
once we get up this close, I'm not a fan of buying it right here. I'm a fan of waiting till it breaks out, then buy it up here. So the buy areas for me, sorry, this is getting pretty marked up, isn't it? Uh, the buy areas would be this area here. And because we're looking at this chart, we see what we see. I'm going to say anything in this area. So a buy here allows me a little bit of profit. If it breaks through, then great. We now have that J hook formation, which leads to the next wave. Because all this is is wave one, wave two down, and wave three up. So right down here, I think is the best buy. On a breakout is the best buy. Anything close to that top, you're really playing with fire, and I would probably hold off. All right, really quick, I'm going to go up in a couple of questions here. What about uh, 1226 to, to, to 119? 12, 1226, 1226, 1226, right here. Uh, 1226. That's that's not a that's not a um, that's not a J hook right there because we really don't have a big enough rally. That's just some flat trading. I would look for I would look for a statement. I want to see a statement right here. Now the statement doesn't have to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles up, but I want to see a statement. I want the bulls to be involved because I'm wanting that trend to continue. Right here, you really don't have uh, a trend. Now, let me go see what your one, yeah, one nine. That's got nothing to do with a J hook at all. We're, a J hook is not buying this. A J hook is buying this part right here. So your question, what about 1226, so this bullish candle here, to one nine? That's just a rally. That has got nothing to do with the J hook except it is required for a J hook. Just because you have a rally does not mean we're going to have uh, a J hook pattern uh, set up from there. We could rally and totally crash and not go anywhere. But this is required for the J hook. Uh, this also works for the end. Yeah, and you know what? I, I'd rather keep tonight just the J hook pattern. Uh, for the inverse, it, 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 it would be the H pattern, but for the purposes of tonight, strictly a bullish J hook. Main reason is uh, we're going to keep it down to a night, uh, right, right to an hour tonight, really tight. Um, let's see, Mura, continuation of a trend. Correct. That's what we're looking for. We've started a trend here, and if we, if we come over here to, let's look at this chart with the moving averages. You can see how the we this happens to be a rounded bottom breakout. Now this is not the reason I I picked this one. It just it it's it's on my list. I didn't like the first two, and I took the very next one uh, that was down. It's got nothing to do with uh, RBB, and we'll look at some that's not an RBB. But I look at this and I see how we've come across the 20, the 34, and the 50. We're starting a major trend here, and now we've pulled back to right on top of the 50-day simple moving average. Not to mention, look at the double bottom. These are little characteristics I want to look for uh, on that J-hook pattern. So we have that rally, that thrust, thrust up, profit-taking pullback, and then a reason to buy it. What's your reason to buy it? Now there's a couple of different cases, and, and we're going to look at several different charts so that we can look at different scenarios. But in this particular scenario, you can see we actually have uh, a downtrend if you want to look at these candles, not the wicks. If you just look at this candle, there's your doji, bearish doji sandwich setup, and there you see you have follow through. That is, that is definitely a short term downtrend. So, what happens is there's, like I said, there's certain characteristics we look for. So, one characteristic like in this case right here, we're going to notice that we have a tail that happened on this day, which that is by no means a buy signal. I'm not even going to begin to say that's a buy signal because it's not, and that is not a PBO. But what happens is we start seeing this selling down, and then we have an inverted hammer. 
That right there should be a key to put it on your watch list. When you can put together an uh, inverted hammer and a tail low within pennies of each other on top of the 50-day simple moving average, that is a characteristic I want to pay attention to. Now, if you don't catch that, I would hope you would catch today's candle. Big old bullish candle, but definitely telling us the bulls are in here. So what do we do with this chart? Okay, I've pointed out the J hook, uh, the pattern that looks like it's going to go higher. What do you do with it? Very simple. When we go, when we put this on our watch list or we're flipping through charts like we are this evening, I look at this chart, I might say, and I'm not saying this chart here, so don't anyone, anyone think of this as a possible buy tomorrow. It's not what I'm doing here right now. Um, but I look at this chart and I might say to myself, I like that chart. I want that chart. Um, if, if the market was open right now, I would buy this chart. So what I'm telling myself is that this has met all my criteria. Piercing candle, controlled bottom staying above that piercing candle, nice thrust, bullish, bullish gusto moving up. That That's important. And then we have this pullback with this low inverted hammer, this candle today. I want this chart. So what do we do tomorrow? We buy the chart. We don't fuss with messing around with anything. You know, everybody wants to wants to wait for a pullback. Well, you've already got your pullback. Everybody wants something different than what they have. Well, you've got what could be the very best chart out there right now. So you just want to buy this chart. It's doing everything that you've asked it to do everything I, I I can't stress that enough so what would you wait for tomorrow uh, where okay maybe where wouldn't you buy it tomorrow let's do that here's where I would not buy it tomorrow if it gapped up I would not buy it if it gapped down I would not buy it but if it opened up somewhere in that neighborhood that has got to be some serious consideration right there I, I wanted this chart tonight so if it opens up in this area why wouldn't I want it here because what we what we drew back here a moment ago is everything we wanted here's a down move there's our up move so if we map this out on paper you can see that where I don't want it I don't want it close to this top I do want it, say, in that area right there, or I want it up here. But what happens is every day I see this, and, and, and I'm guilty of this myself as well. I see the chart pattern set up. I see it ready to be bought. It's doing everything perfect. But when today rolls around, I start mixing, oh, what's the market doing? What's the attitude of the market? Oh, look, it opened up up here. Oh, you know what? I think I better wait till it moves lower. I better wait till I get a better price. Well, I'll bet you a $100 bill that's not what you thought the night before when you were looking at these. I'll bet you you thought, you know what? I'm going to buy it in this area. But yet, if it opens up up here, we don't buy it because we just have to get that better price. You're, you're trading the pattern, not necessarily the price. The price will come when you get into the pattern. So, sorry, I'm, I'm beginning to get a little preachy here. I better, I better move on. Let's, let's. Uh, I'll bring this up. Some charts I'm gonna skip over because, uh, well, I'll tell you why if I skip over. Uh, let's not skip over this one. And let's look at this chart here. I don't want to. I don't want to know. I don't care about the fact that uh, it's coming off the bottom and once again this is this is simply a PBO uh, scan I'll post it out here later after after we're done with volume there's nothing in here about a rounded bottom breakout although we you know we know that this is what this one is but I want you to look at the chart pattern look how look how 
this rallied up. Now, I would not call that a J-hook because that is too deep for me to call it a J-hook. It would have had to come into this area right here and move up. So you'll never hear me call that a J-hook. It just won't do it. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's too deep for that. But let's look right here. Isn't this a J-hook? Now, you certainly don't have that pretty bottom where price has, um, price has also come down like that. Because you can see how price is up like this, up, up high. In fact, we might come over here and draw uh, a line right in here. And let's create a parallel line. This is a, that's perfect. This, this is just a different type of J-hook, a PBO type J-hook. There's our thrust. There's our thrust right here. Some and and I could even I would even make an argument. Here's one right here. I would even call this a, your thrust a little PBO. There's your J hook. There's your actual J hook breakout. And now it's doing it again right in here. So when when I look at this, I see where. Um, and you'll find that I a lot of times I will most more times than not I won't pay attention to that very next day but it's the next day I might pay attention to now because this is a red day I probably wouldn't give it any consideration I would however keep it on a watch list all of a sudden the bulls show up now this is where I want to get interested so I start looking at these lows here and they're obviously not the same but we're looking in that area so when I see over the next couple of days that we're we continue to close over this line I put in here and why did I put that line in there if you look at at this candles low remember I said I normally skip over the first one I want to watch that third one and the fourth one Notice how I put that line, I tried to get the line anyway, the same distance between the lows, just split that difference. It's just a guideline. The, the, you know, the lines we draw on here, you know, I, I, they're not absolute. They, they, they are just not. And anyone who does that and treats them as, as perfect, you'll, you're probably going bald. You have no hair. Uh, it's probably driving you crazy. Well, that's because there's no lines you can draw on this chart that are perfect absolute. Um, I know every now and then, every hundred stocks, you'll get a chart that obeys Fibonacci lines to the penny. Uh, if you want to look for that one out of every hundred, then okay. But good luck finding it when the trading actually starts. When the when the doors open, when the bell goes off and the horses start moving out of the starting line, finding that perfect chart is going to be pretty tough to do. So that's why you have to really look at these lines as they're just an area. They're just boxing in an area for you. So I showed right here where I would use these two candles, divide it just to give me an idea. And you can clearly see that the bulls are keeping us above that line right there. So this area here is where I want to be a buyer in this lower area. Now I would take the upper area. That's not a problem. Uh, everybody knows that most trades uh, are, are, are walked into, you know, um, a piece here, a piece there. So what if you did buy a piece on this bullish candle at the top and then it got bearish with a doji? darn it I bought it up here a piece I just walked into it so what do I want to do I want to add more to it we're still in the buy area we're still forming the J hook pattern remember if if you're trading the J hook uh, pattern what you're looking for is you're looking for that chart to break out so all this in here becomes that buy area anything in this area here so if I can buy a chunk up here if I get get tricked into buying it buy it here and then it moves back down if I buy more here 
all of a sudden my average price is maybe in the middle. That's exactly what we're looking for. If we were to put that uh, put that uh, circle up here, if this is the if this is the breakout area right there, just drop it down. Look where we are. We're at the very bottom of that circle where it starts to turn up right here. So what a great place to have an entry. And now we're looking for that breakout area. So you can see that that uh, J hooks don't have to be that you know perfect J hook or candlestick floating between those arrows right in there. They can be a little bit jagged up here. Um, let's go back to this chart. There we go. And then uh, some characteristics. Let's look at some characteristics here. Where did this come from? It came from, if you count from here up, I, I would count that as one swing or I would even count this as two swings. One, two, one, two depends how big of a picture you're looking at but if you go backwards the double bottom huge characteristic look how we move down here we have this gap down bullish candle look how these candles held in place we rallied up and we pulled back this is a bit of a deep pullback but we held above those lows these lows right here are above these lows in fact these lows right here are above the biggest move of this bottom down and actually bounce back up for the day we pulled back managed to keep the lows and then look where that look where we started to break out of this candle here and look how we held all that so what we want to do is look backwards a little bit and we want to see if the power is there in this particular case I think there's lots of power in this one I think there's very good thrust up and I think we have great consolidation up here um, where are we okay where should the stop be for the pullback breakout area a lot depends on where you buy it you know Dave we don't want a you don't want a 10 15 20 percent stop you certainly don't want to do that so you want to what you want to do is find out where do the bulls lose control where would the bulls lose control right here so I might come over here and let's uh, draw some lines and you know what the first thing that comes to my mind right there is going to be that candle and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit lower than the high of that candle right there I'm gonna go a little bit lower because I want to give it some room my goal you know <laughs> you know I think some people actually buy a stock and their goal is to get stopped out you know sometimes I think stops are put so tight that that is the goal um, and really that's not our goal is to get stopped out our goal is to allow the pattern to work but we want a safety stop in there we want a safety stop so this is the bare minimum I would put the stop absolute bare minimum back into here and I don't care where you bought it up here uh, I don't care if you bought it at the at, at at what was the close here at three dollars and seventy one cents uh, which which would represent what uh, twelve percent whoops a little more how about eight percent there we go so I know that seems like a lot but you have to let the chart pattern work and if that seems like a lot don't buy them so high simple solution buy them lower um, and then uh, you know you want to take in consideration here lately we've we've put up this 100 day simple moving average that might be something that plays in there now I know I know the the wicks came down through that area um, I would have a hard time putting a stop a hard stop in this area right here for fear of getting stopped out but what do you do about a candle like this I know it's very very hard but when you have a candle like that and throughout the day this is what it looks like it is truly best to allow that candle to finish I, it is horribly hard um, to do that it's just it, it's one of the hardest things in the world uh, to allow that candle to finish uh, but I have found that more times than not 
if I just let it work and if I'm if I'm buying the chart because of the overall chart not because of a whim today I'm not buying it because of the news today most everybody here knows I rarely buy because of news in fact many times I say nah that stock is too newsy I don't want anything to do with it because that's not the type of charts I want to look at I want to look at charts that meet certain criteria look at this over here look at that double bottom there look at that morning star signal that breakout look at that rally up and that little bit of a pullback and that rally up and that consolidation man that's 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 an that's art at work right there so the last thing I want to do is get stopped out I want to give it every possible chance to work out because the chart says to it's not you know it's not one candle we're concerned with let's see uh, Ed is saying oh, oh Gigi says uh, uh, oh CMC float box breakout thank you uh, let's see Ed saying uh, if it seems a uh, it seems a lot buy stocks with smaller ATR that's right um, you know it, one of the things that I, I say often Ed and I don't actually I don't think I've said it here recently is you know once we go through the process of we like we like this chart then the next process might be maybe not the exact process but th somewhere along those lines we want to say okay I want to buy this but first ask where's my stop where am I gonna put my stop and let's let let's let's put our stop I wanna I want to be a little extreme here so I'm actually gonna drop down below that low okay we've got uh, a big candle up we've got a doji we've got a dark candle that all this is is profit taking and then we have a bullish candle that says hey we want in this chart okay let's buy it wait wait before we actually buy ask yourselves two simple questions where is my stop we've already established that now where is my buy point we're going we're I'm gonna I'm gonna go extremes here so let's say the close near the close of of this bullish candle here so somewhere in the neighborhood of three dollars and forty seven cents now ask yourself can I afford that loss can I afford twelve and a half percent loss the answer would be no okay not a problem I still like the chart but I cannot buy it based on where that stop is and where that buy is so sit back be patient maybe or you could move your stop up you could do that you could move your stop up tighter you could still buy it up here move your stop up tighter now you're looking at eight and a half percent is that is that more than you can afford if the answer is yes then stop either move your stop up higher or be patient let it come back but let's do this let's stick with our original plan let's put our stop down here and I'm gonna go back to my original stop just slightly underneath the close of this candle right here so I can't afford to buy it here so I'm gonna wait I still like the chart pattern it moves back we get a doji here is that doji what if what if I bought it on that doji you see is that too much hmm can I afford can I afford a little over three percent loss yeah all right why not buy it we talked about this exact thing today uh, somebody was asking some questions in the room we talked about it that here's what traders will do they'll look at this candle at night maybe we're looking at this at night and we're saying we'll say hey I'm gonna buy this on a breakout an inside day maybe uh, not a breakout sorry an inside day on some consolidation but you know what happens all the best intentions are nothing but intentions because we we look at candlesticks with such a a bullish bearish posture they either are or they aren't and they're really not like that that's not really what candlesticks are they're not really 100 percent bullish or 100 percent bearish 
But when we see that dark candle, it makes us nervous. We get scared from our plan, so we don't we don't pull the trigger on our plan. And we stop looking at what the chart pattern is doing, and we start looking more at what the candlestick is doing. And that's where I think a fatal mistake is. If we just be patient, and now we move back and look where we are now. We have a hammer, eh, close to a hammer. We're closing up right at the T line. We're closing above that 100. We're closing above these lows right in here. My stop is down here. So my stop is here. What if I was to buy a little piece of that on this candle? Or even that doji for that matter. Just a little piece of it. That's all you're, you want to you want to start a relationship with the, with this chart. Then the next day, now we get all excited. Now you can add to it if you want. You can add to this candle because ultimately what you're looking for is that breakout. Now you've placed your entry in a chart that meets all your criteria. And and I, I you know I don't know if this particular chart meets all of somebody's criteria here. Uh, it's certainly it certainly meets my criteria. Uh, there's no doubt about that. That's 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 the perfect world right there. Uh, it needs to break out. So you see that half that half ball shape. I'm willing to buy it anywhere in that area right there, because this area up here. This is money. This is money up here. Okay, really quick. Um, Caroline, why can't you just uh, buy less shares? You could. You you absolutely could. Uh, uh, Caroline, I think maybe you typed that in when I was saying uh, leg into it. That that's what that that's what I'm that's what I was talking about. Uh, say for instance, you trade with. Uh, since you mentioned shares, I'll use shares. Maybe you buy a thousand shares of everything you trade. So what I want to do is divide that by normally is four. So I might buy uh, 250, say on that candle. Maybe I buy uh, 250 somewhere in here. So now I own 500 at something around here. So I might, you know, depending on what it does, I might add more. I might wait for a breakout and add something like that. Uh, I'm going to jump over a few people here, go down to Caroline. Instead of looking uh, at it in terms of percent loss, divide your max amount uh, ready to lose by the risk and, and take. Uh, the, all of that works if it's part of your trading plan. I agree with every bit of that. There's, you know, there is no perfect way to trade this except um, if, if 25 people here right now, well, if, if all 93 people here in the room were to trade this, and if all 93 people traded it with a different plan, except all 93 people made money, there's 93 perfect ways to trade it right there. So it, it's, you know, we, we've got the basic outline of of a of a of a, a chart setup but everybody might trade it a little bit differently and what you suggest there I think is a perfect way uh, to look at it. Um, uh, Neil is saying or buy an eighth of a position. John is asking do you hold through earnings? Not normally. Not normally. I you know sometimes I do but not normally. Uh, thanks Pam. Uh, where would you place your target? Okay we haven't even looked at that. Here's a simple <clears throat> excuse me, here's a simple rule on targets. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the very next swing high. Now I'm look I'm not I'm I'm gonna put it up here to start with because that is the very next the very next high. But why would we want to even place any line up here whatsoever? There is no money between here and here. That that eight percent that's just not that may be what we accept, but that's not what we should go after. So 
I'm not even remotely interested in this high. It means absolutely nothing to me. What I'm going to do is come over here to the next high. Now we have something in here. Now, uh, Ed mentioned uh, ATR. If you'll notice that majority of stocks I look at, they have, they have a fairly uh, high ATR. Uh, and uh, uh, they're fairly volatile. Uh, and that's because I want to see some potential. I don't want to see the distance. Uh, we'll just take it, say, the middle of today's candle. I don't want to see that there only be 2%. I, I just can't see the effort for 2%, uh, average two, 2 range in. So I'm looking at that as being the high. And if I was to be able to get an inside day buy, which everyone knows how I feel about those, then I could look at this and see a potential 16%. Now, I'll take 16% all day long. There's no question about that at all. 16% uh, would be terrific. If the chart still looks bullish and if it's still working out fine, if the market is still good, then, then maybe we can look at a higher move. There we go. Maybe to the 200 up here. Uh, for 14 percent that's 16 plus 14 you know we might come over here let me move this out of the way you might come over here and what what kind of resistance levels do we have let's do this there we go let's come over here I, I like that area right there I like I like where that bullish candle came up and failed I like that high that looks like a pretty good target which happens to be right on the 200 period moving average. The other target that I would look at is probably right up in that area uh, using those candles. So you can see from this chart here, my risk, I can keep my risk being pretty small by working the chart. I know the chart pattern I'm looking for. And if you know the chart pattern you're looking for, then you're able to figure out, uh, let's see here. I can do this. You're a yeah. You're you're able to figure out that I want to buy in this area, and I have to match my buy with my stop. I don't, you know I don't want a 16% loss, so you might have to be patient. And if you see one of these bearish candles, you have to remember the pattern you're looking for, and the pattern you're looking for. Um, it is a whoops try this again there we go it is a pattern that's coming from a rally with profit taking which means we're looking at a pullback so when the pullback happens don't let it scare you out let it let it be your friend i mean and again you've got to look at you know we've got to look at some rules here and i look at this and i man i see a a most definite stop area right in here and you know some people will put their stop in uh, some people might put a stop in uh, ooh, let's say right here about 350 you may or may not get stopped out some people might come down and put their stop in I purposely moved just above that low some people might put their stop in what is that 327 28 you may or may not get stopped out there is absolutely zero magic to where you put a stop there is absolutely none there's some logical places and wherever you see the logical place you need to drop it down a little bit lower because if you see it as a logical place believe me others see it as a logical place so always drop a little bit lower Whew, okay, uh, let's see, Leo, did I do that for you? And Ian, yeah, eight to average true range. Um, leg one, approximately leg three. Um, yeah, yeah, there, there's some theories on that, and I don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. Um, you know, you've got leg one here, consolidation, you're looking for leg three. I think it's all approximate. It's just like, you know, it, it, it's like we say, I, for this type of chart pattern, I like to think of the 200 as a target direction, but it's approximate. I mean, let's get real. Uh, up there is 30%. 
Is that doable? Absolutely. Are we likely or what do you think the probabilities are we have a little market turbulation before we get there and we see some pullback? I, I think the, the, the idea of that is very good. I think the probabilities of that is excellent. So anytime we look at targets or you, you, know, you consider um, uh, leg one, leg three is equal within some guidelines. You know, it's, uh, certainly I wouldn't do it to the penny. Certainly would not do it to the penny. Um, let's see here. Uh, ATN. Charles is pointing out ATN. AT, ATEN. Yeah, ATEN. That's a very nice one. See, see how we have that thrust up? I mean, let's look at this. What, what is this? Good grief. That's 30%. Isn't that enough? Wow. You know, you, you look at this chart right here and you think, oh, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> it's a 30% move. I think that's a huge deal. Now we have a little consolidation. You can see how we have that wick down here. Now we have a little piercing candle. I would say we're in bottoming area on this chart. Uh, uh, bottoming area here. So if I was to buy this, I'm going to draw this in here uh, right there. If I was to buy somewhere in this area and then it start to pull back, would I be frightened out of that? Mm, I could be. It depends. You know, it depends on the day. There's always that. So, you know, that's always something to think about. What is, is the market tanking? Yeah, I would be absolutely afraid if this started to move down and the market was tanking. But if this is if this is just moving down, even if the market is moving up. I wouldn't be worried about that. This is the area I want in it. It's got nothing to do, you know, buying this chart doesn't have anything to do with the current candle, say tomorrow's candle being the current candle, doesn't have anything to do with that. We already like the chart. What would tomorrow's candle have to do to tell us that we didn't know that we no longer like the chart? Well, let's see. What if it did this? All right. Okay. You're right. I would not like that chart. But what if the candle just simply did something like this? I'm still perfectly fine with that chart. I'm going to redraw that for a second. And I want to purposely make a bearish engulf. How would I feel about that? You know, my opinion of candlesticks is they are short-term. They are not long-term indicators. So what does that bearish engulf tell me right there? It tells me we're going to see a lower low tomorrow. Yeah, pretty much. But a lower low could be just a simple, let's see, I'll draw it all red. Uh, it could end up just like that. So we put a candle in that looks like that. We've got that double double bottom talk in here. We've got that low high, higher low double bottom uh, thing going on. All of a sudden, wow, we now like this chart, don't we? Which we should have liked it all through this area right in here. Rather than trade the candlestick, trade the pattern that we're looking at. Uh, let's see, Ed's asking, do you advocate scaling out of various targets along the way? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know, uh, sometimes I take all of it, sometimes I take part of it, but I absolutely do. Uh, definitely when, when, when price moves up and it gets to an area that if, if somebody has to question it, I think you should take 50% off the table right there. Uh, and then you know run your stop up put a trailing stop on so that outside of a gap down you're a guaranteed winner uh, on that chart uh, let's see here I wanna I, I um, let's run down a few more of these uh, Kerr uh, Gigi pointed out Kerr today and here's Kerr in this chart the whole idea behind this 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 uh, this scan that I have and I'll I will post it out here in a moment the whole idea is to get that thrust in there and then you know the pullback there's there's if there's one way there's 10,000 ways 
to look for a pullback. Uh, I mean, there's there are so many ways. It's it's crazy to consider the the possibilities. Um, two bar lows, uh, three lower closes, um, a pullback yesterday to above the below the T line, and you only want to look at stocks that close above the T line. Maybe I believe me. If there's one, there's ten thousand different ways to look for that turn. Um, I have I have pretty much decided that uh, the best way for me and I'm going to go through here and we'll pick a few charts is to uh, use a, a, a scan to get you in the ballpark and if you like the chart flag the chart I talked to somebody today about that you know if you like the chart put it on a watch list I'm going to I'm going to flag that one put it on a watch list and only trade those charts tomorrow tomorrow night then you can look for other charts but during the day don't mess with them just simply trade the charts you're looking at so I'm 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 coming through here I'm gonna I'm gonna flag Kerr uh, here's one uh, ISIS look at that trend what a beauty of a trend look at that thrust bull kicker type formation here let me draw this line right here. Look how we broke out of that that area right there. I, I mean, if we want to get technical, all right. Let's. I mean, if you want to look at those highs, let's move it up there. I, I would never do that. I I would do that right there. So you can see how we have a high. We closed. We came right up to it. We came right up to it. Boom! We finally broke out little bull kicker breakout we rallied up we're pulling back we have a morning star pick morning star signal on this pullback this to me looks like an absolutely nice J hook uh, notice the J hook pattern right here as well here we are up slight little pullback and here we are up again uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and flag this one uh, I'm gonna pass that one for now uh, I'll pass that one for now. I'll pass that one. Pass this one. Whoop! Oh, we already have that one flagged. Uh, nah. And you know, just because you say no right now, doesn't mean you can't go back and flag more. I'm just quickly looking at some charts here. All right, I'm going to stop right there. So now what I'm going to do is let's just bring those flag charts up to the top, and we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let let's how would we trade those tomorrow well I'm a big fan of inside day trading I'm a huge fan because it means a couple of things uh, if you buy if you're able to get an inside buy and remember we like this chart tonight I like this chart so I want this chart my only decision tomorrow is to buy it that's all you, you know you, we're gonna we, we probably ought to put where we're going to buy it and that's what that gray box is right there I want to buy it inside that gray box I'm not gonna fuss with it I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna try to try to try to make a better price I just want to buy it so I put the buy in there buy a quarter buy a third don't buy the full position just a quarter third divided into the you know something and then buy it that's what I want to do that meets my criteria 100 percent right there now from there if it pulls back I can add to it if it starts to break out I can add to it but either way I am now involved with a chart that I plan to be involved with FWM where would I be involved with this chart well on this one here I'm gonna draw this a little different we want to come right up there and I'll go ahead and write down to that line so I want to be involved right in here because I see the potential of the chart pattern uh, let's see Kerr where would I like to buy Kerr well let's buy Kerr actually let's buy Kerr right there that's a little high you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna or a little low I'll t I'll take Kerr in this area right here um, 
Curse probably a little, well, it's not as volatile as I thought. Well, I'm going to still live with that. I'll take, I'll take Kerr in this area right here. Uh, ISIS. So, let's see here. I like ISIS right there. I'm using the, these two candles, the, the open and the close. It also covers the open of that little hammer right there. And we're right at the top. So I'm looking for an inside day. That's what I want. Now, the, 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 the beauty of an inside day, to me anyway, just my personal opinion, is we're looking at a chart that has rallied up, has pulled back, has the potential of making that, making that J hook. And in inside day, I'm not paying too high because it hasn't broken out yet. I'm not paying too low because we're not we're not coming down into these lows or um, we're not below my stop area. I've already placed a stop in there, so I'm willing to buy it in this area right here. And you can see that if you draw that here, I could do this. Uh, let's draw that line right there. Pretty close. You you can see that half moon, that half ball, and I'm right in that area with 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 the possibility that if it fails at these tops, if I buy it in here, I can make a percent. Uh, let's see. Uh, get ready for the, yeah, I'm, we're headed there pretty quick. Uh, if you're going to add on a further pullback or on a move up, why not buy the whole position? You could, you could, you you absolutely could add. There's, you know, again, it's it's make a trading plan and 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 trade the plan and uh, uh you know 93 people here if 93 people trade traded this chart 93 people could have 93 completely different ideas of how to trade it and it's possible that all 93 people here make money on this trade that's the perfect trade is when you make money there's no you know there's no and and that's where and and I know you know like one person I was talking to today if you're here you know who I'm talking to um, we get we get wrapped up in all these little things that that drive us nuts and part of it is simply because we're afraid to lose one or two percent and that's the I'm afraid that's trading uh, if uh, this is a business, and if it was a if you if it was a brick and mortar store, you know every day you'd have to pay rent, you'd have to pay your electricity every day you walked in and flipped that light switch. There's a certain amount of outgo in a business, and trading is no different. Trading is not, hey, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning and I'm gonna be a stock trader and I'm not gonna have one loss. That is not uh, the answer. Uh, right there. It, it is just unrealistic. Let's see. Uh, Fran, uh, is there a source um, that would have an outline for a trading plan? I, on the member side of the website, I, there's a couple of trading plans. And uh, uh, one person told me that they'd be happy to give me their trading plan, uh, that they're working on this one right now. And I'll, I'll have that posted on the member side of the website. You bet. And by the way, anybody that would like to have their trading plan posted there, please, uh, would love to have it. We can or we don't have to put your name on it. It could just be just donation to the without your name if you, you know, if you don't want your name attached to anything. And that's for any chart setup. Just anything to help people trade uh, is what we're looking for. Um, A-T-E-N. A lot of people today bought this one. Uh, in the trading room today, A-T-E-N, and you can see how we're starting up. We have that wave one, wave two, we're starting that wave three up. So we move up here and to that recent high, 9.5%. Uh, I could deal with that. I kind of think this one might move a little higher. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're in it, I think most people got in, I'm guessing, around 5 bucks today. Uh, so up to that recent high, you'll have to decide at the time is 11% worth it. That's a that's a decent return. I couldn't argue with that. Uh, 
you know, there's some traders that's going to use the moving average up here, the 100. That represents 21%. You bet I would take that in a heartbeat. Some traders, part of their plan is going to say, well, look at that dark candle. It's very likely to come back up to that high. That represents 30%. Then some traders are going to look at this. They're going to say, look at that entire void all the way up to these lows. That represents 60%. Everybody could make money on this trade. Some folks are going to make more than others. That's trading. Um, oh, thank you, Ed. Ed is saying for those looking for a trade journal uh, to record and learn uh, from their trading log, uh, look at these. Thank you very much for posting those. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, okay, so uh, we, we've just looked at four trades, uh, five trades, one, two, three, four, five, that I would look at trading tomorrow. Um, and with, uh, uh, with, with entry ideas and what we would do with them. So uh, there's there's five J hooks tomorrow. Um, some might work out, some might not. Realize that some uh, some might not work out for a couple of days from now. Some may take a, this A T E N. It may sit here and move sideways for three or four days before it actually starts to break out. But if when it's all done, if you take a look at it, it's still doing the same thing. It's still rallied up. It pulled back, it consolidated, and it started moving up. That's the plan right there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I said I would go post this here. Uh, let me go get it, PBO. See if I can find it. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. And then we'll call it a night. Sorry, I moved. I actually went longer than um, than I planned right here. Um, Ed, by the way, uh, feel free to work your magic <laughs> uh, on these scans. Ed, by the way, here is a, an extremely good uh, artist, artist when it comes to PCFs. Uh, that's what I would call him as an artist. Uh, so the main idea, and, and you'll find anybody that's been here any length of time, you know that that uh, I use this a lot, this little piece right here. Uh, what I'm asking for it is the close yesterday divided by the close 20 days ago. I use 20 a lot. Uh, divided, uh, let's see, the close yesterday divided minus the, sorry, the close yesterday minus the close 20 days ago divided by the close 20 days ago greater than 12%. I am simply want some power right here. And in this case here, this one is simply and the close less than the high five days ago. The rest of it, let the candlestick and let flipping through charts work for you. So what I'm looking for is the past 20 days, I want to see a 12% rise. Uh, and that's from yesterday's close, by the way. And then I want to see... Uh, the close today below the high five days ago because I don't want to see a breakout. I'm not looking for a breakout in this case. I'm looking for the PBO, the pullback opportunity in this case. Uh, then from there, I simply um, will close this up. That's where I simply want to look through the, the charts and I want to find the charts that meet my my criteria. Something I could I could make an argument with, uh, for instance, this job here. Now I don't, I don't like this chart because I doubt this has. Yeah, this is probably this is not enough volume uh, for me. But if you just look for this move right here, there's there's a major, major, major move. We're down. Here's your hammer. Aren't we forming a bottom at the low of that hammer? That could be a criteria. FRO. Um, I, I I could have picked that one, and I probably would have this one as a buy on a breakout uh, right here, FR. In fact, you know what? I, I may go ahead and I'll flag that one. Uh, EXEL. I don't like the wick, so I'm going to pass on that. There's too many good ones. Uh, this AUQ, 
I could make an argument on this one if this is what you're looking for. Whoops, let's draw that again. Look at that wedge right there. Look at that chart. Look how it's rallied up consolidated right here rallied up again it's console it's doing everything we want it to do and let's draw the J hook in there just just to be sure see we've got our rally there's the J hook whoops got a little sloppy there all right let's see did I yeah I posted that out there so anyway um, that's all I have this evening that that's it uh, I want to say thank you Again, this was because somebody emailed me, uh, asked about it. I also saw a little question about it this morning. And uh, somebody just mentioned, hey, all you got to do is ask. He'll talk about it. And that's why we're talking about the J-hooks, the PBO uh, J-hook here. Remember, it's just a continuation pattern. That is, the, that is the most important thing there is. You're looking for a trend or a... a, a what what I call a big thrust. I, I would call that a thrust. There's something going on right here. And then I'm looking for profit taking. That's all. Buy in buy as it starts coming uh not into the profit taking, but when you start seeing those candlestick signals that are starting to suggest uh the turning point, and you know what you might be wrong, by the way. Don't let that ruin your trading. We're all wrong sometimes. Um, I got an email the other day. Uh, somebody said they had, I think it was like 93 winning trades in a row. What a load of crap. I mean, you, you can't believe that stuff. The best traders in the world, they have losses. They make mistakes. They put the stops at the wrong places. They get stopped out. They don't nail the bottom. They don't nail the top. And nobody makes 93 winning trades in a row not meaningful trades uh, if you want if you want 93 tr winning trades in a row then join us here in the trading room and uh, with the scanner I can probably get you uh, in and out with one or two pennies and if you want to do that 93 times in a row I could probably get you 93 wins in a row and if that's what you want to hang your hat on rock and roll that is not what I'm looking for. One or two pennies. With that, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Let's go watch our president, see what he's got to say. And we'll see everybody tomorrow morning. And we'll talk about it not very much tomorrow. <laughs> thank you, Ed. Appreciate you being here. Everybody, thank you. Gigi, thanks for your charts. Everybody, thank you very much. Dave, thanks for the idea tonight. Everybody, take care. See you in the morning.